So my name is Erin Salato. I am a program manager uh, at Microsoft. I've been there for about a year. I am on the SQL Experiences team. Uh, Experiences covers tools, drivers, portal, all of that. Uh, I am the program manager for both Management Studio and Azure Data Studio, which I think of them like my kids. I love them both, but differently, right? Um, how many of you have been in one of my earlier sessions, either today or yesterday? Okay, so there are some things that I may say that you've already heard, forgive me, uh, but for the other folks who have not been to one of my sessions, uh, sometimes some of this stuff bears repeating. This, um, and, and prior to working at Microsoft, if, in case you didn't know, I was a consultant. So I was a consultant for about nine years uh, for a consulting company called SQL Skills. And I came here and I presented on a bunch of stuff, query store, uh, extended events, all, troubleshooting, tuning, all these things that I love. I still love all of those things. The great thing is that now I get to make sure that we have good experiences for those things within the tools. Uh, and so I'll be the first to say that no tool, SSMS or Azure Data Studio, is perfect, okay? I assume if you are here today, it's because you are interested in Azure Data Studio, right? Okay. Now that said, how many of you spend the majority of your day in Management Studio? <sighs> okay, put your hands back up. Look around the room. Okay. What are y'all doing here if you're spending the majority of your day in Management Studio? This is a serious question. Like, I'm asking, like, you like the annotation? Oh, the notebooks. The note, you like notebooks in Azure Data Studio. Okay, great. Notebooks. What else? Yes. Less options, less complicated, right? Perfect. Export to Excel. Export to Excel, okay. Okay, yes. The GitHub integration, fantastic, right? IntelliSense that works. That's so funny, yes. It opens in a few seconds, yes. What was that? Logging in, faster, okay. What else, yes? Can see more JSON. Postgres. Linux. Linux. Uh, Query history. Oh, okay. Query plan. Ah, oh, look at that. I want to know what the surprises are. You want to know what the surprises are. Okay. So, again, my background was entirely in Management Studio. Right? Management Studio released in 2005. It's now 18 years old. It's a legal adult. But it's big and it's wide and um, it's probably more than a lot of times, things, stuff that we need, particularly as we go to Azure, right? We don't need necessarily everything that's in Management Studio um, when we're looking at Azure. <clears throat> Azure Data Studio, cross-platform, right? So if you're running Linux, if you're running Mac, I know there are those of you that love Mac, that's great. I'm a Windows girl, but if you love Mac, that's fine. Um, the market share there is increasing, and we absolutely need to have a tool that satisfies that group of users. So that is one value proposition of Azure Data Studio. The fact that it's lightweight, loads very quickly, has a much smaller footprint. I am aware of the issues with Management Studio. I know that it loads slower. I do know that it also loads faster in 19 than it did in 18. I actually just tested this yesterday on my laptop. We just released 19.02 for SSMS on Monday. Uh, has a few fixes in it. Azure Data Studio, not a complete tool. At this point, would you all agree, right? My job here today is not to convince you that you need to switch from Management Studio to Azure Data Studio. My goal here today is to help you understand what different functionality exists in Azure Data Studio that's not in SSMS, and to also talk a little bit, if you're interested, about where we're going with Azure Data Studio, okay? But I'm not trying to convince you. And I will also say that I don't think that you can live entirely in one tool. I know that a lot of you want to. I get a lot of feedback from Azure Data Studio. Have any of you ever been in there and gotten the, the pop-up that says, would you recommend this to a friend? Yes, okay. If you answer that, and particularly if you input a comment, I read your comment. 
I read all of the comments. Uh, and people are brutally honest because they can write whatever they want and they don't know me, right? And they don't know that I read that and sometimes get really sad and upset. But that's okay because the honest feedback is what I need to figure out what we need to do next with Azure Data Studio. So we probably, I don't know that we'll have time today for you all to tell me what you want to see and what you don't like. Um, but I'm more than welcome to hear that feedback, if not in this session or uh, immediately after, uh, back in the expo hall somewhere over there. I can find space, okay? So that's, a, that's an open invitation for you to email me at any point to say, here's what I'm seeing, here's what I'm doing, right? Here's where I'm having a problem. It's also an open invitation for you to email me to say, I love Azure Data Studio. I wanna see where you're going with it. I wanna be part of a focus group that you're doing uh, to like try things out. If you are interested in that, send me an email saying, I would love to be part of your focus group. If that's not of interest to you, I'm not offended at all, right? Um, but I do wanna make this product better. I wanna make this uh, product something that folks can spend 80 to 90% of their day in without having to flip over to Management Studio, either because it doesn't have the functionality that you need or because it's unreliable. I am fully aware that it has had, Azure Data Studio has had its challenges in terms of consistency and reliability. I have seen that personally. I have seen all of that in the feedback. I get it. So I can tell you that since September, we have had a dedicated set of engineers who are actively working on connectivity. Uh, just the connection experience. We had to make a change to an underlying driver. We went to MDS5 from MDS3. Big change, we've added some improvements. I'm gonna show you those. But overall stability of the application is paramount. So I hope that you over time are starting to see improvements there if you haven't already. Uh, so this was my abstract. And I have a whole bunch of slides, but I'll be really honest. Uh, this session is way more fun if we just come into Azure Data Studio. Uh, so <clears throat> full disclosure, I recorded demos for the keynote. I recorded demos for the portal session I did about an hour and a half ago. I have not recorded any of these demos. Also, grace me a little bit if you could please, in that Azure Data Studio is not my native tool, right? I've been working with it for over a year, but uh, like, there's still some stuff where it is not seamless for me. So for those of you who are looking to potentially move over to Azure Data Studio and find that like you can't do things as quickly as you're used to, I get it, I feel your pain. But that's just part of adopting or adapting to another tool. So totally understand that. For those of you that are standing in the door, if you wanna sit down, there are some seats up front. I swear I am not scary. Uh, I won't bring out the mom voice. So. One of the first things that I discovered in Azure Data Studio that I thought was like so fun and cool, and again, some of you might already know this. If you've used VS Code, show of hands, who's used VS Code in here? Okay, right? Azure Data Studio is a fork of VS Code. And this is great in the sense that the VS Code team can do a lot of work and we get to pick up the benefits of it. A potential drawback here is that when they get those changes in VS Code, we don't always immediately get them into Azure Data Studio. You know how you all maybe don't apply a CU until it's been out for a while, right? Because you kind of want it to shake out and see how it goes. Kind of similar when we're talking about VS Code. They've put in all these fixes. We have to port those things that we want over to Azure Data Studio. That isn't immediate. So we're a little bit behind, uh, working to catch up to get a little bit closer, but something that we have to do. So anyway. If you've used VS Code, then you're familiar with the fact that I can do Control Plus and make this bigger and Control Minus. But if you didn't know that, there you go. Um, I find this incredibly useful both when I'm presenting and when I'm working, uh, depending on what monitor I have this on, right, to make this really, really small or make this bigger depending on what I want to see. So I want to talk about the command palette. So this is Control Shift P right, to get this here. And then from the command palette, if I want to do my color theme, I can type theme and I hop in here. And then I, sh I have, right, different themes built in. How many of you wish that we had dark mode in SSMS? 
Ooh, not so many of you. Um, so those of you that raised your hand, I'm sorry. We don't have any plans to add that anytime soon. And I'll just, I'll just let you down right now, okay? But we have it in Azure Data Studio, okay? And if you don't love dark theme in Azure Data Studio, you can do light, whatever. So uh, I can also get there here, right? Color theme this way, so I can switch to light theme if I prefer that. Does anybody prefer that for viewing? Is that easier for you all to see a little bit? Yeah, okay, I will switch to this then if that's easier for you all to view. So there we go in terms of light theme. Um, we have, there are, ad there's additional themes you can download. I had a note here, from where? I don't know, I have to find that out. Um, so I will add that into the script and I will make the script available. So my keyboard shortcuts. So let's see, if we come over here and we go to keyboard shortcuts. Um, has anybody ever looked at this list? Okay, a couple of you have. It's exhaustive, right? It's incredible. Now, these keyboard shortcuts are not exactly the same as what's, SS what's in SSMS. But did you know that you can download an extension that will map them for you? So if there are certain keystrokes that you're used to doing in SSMS and they don't map directly because this is based on VS Code, you can install an extension that will make that for you. Or you can create your own. Right? So if there's any of these that you don't like, you can remap or add a mapping to. If I scroll down, right, if I start to go down in here, right, look at all of this stuff. There's a whole bunch of stuff that doesn't even have shortcuts enabled. Okay? But it's there if you want to customize that installation for you. Um, an example here is, and I got this feedback somewhere else, right? That, let me come back out one. <clears throat> Um, alt selection to edit multiple lines in SSMS, right? And it's alt shift left mouse in ADS. Uh, so that's something that like a lot of folks like to do in SSMS. Um, here's how you do it in ADS. So command terminal. This is something that I uh, know a fair number of folks tend to use. So let me copy this. Let me make this a little bit smaller. Let me view um, my output window here and go to the terminal tab. And so within the terminal tab here, right, you have different options, right? We can do stuff in PowerShell and Git Bash. We can do a good old command prompt. Um, I tend to come in here and sometimes do a little bit of PowerShell, but I'll admit that's not my forte, um, or I'll hop into command line. So those of you that were at the keynote on Monday, we did a little bit with the new SQL command. You might hear it called Go SQL CMD or just the new CMD. Um, so right from here, I can do query um, and go ahead and execute this, and it will go ahead and run that query against my wide world importers database here that I have selected. So PowerShell I can do from here, as well as a few other languages. There's also a PowerShell extension uh, that's available for you to install. So we have a question which I will happily take right now is why do we have both Visual Studio Code and Azure Data Studio? Who else has wondered that same thing, right? It's confusing, because I mentioned SSMS and ADS and then I threw Visual Studio Code in there and then there's also SSDT. Visual Studio Code is much more command line, right? It does not have the same rich UI that we have here. Uh, there is an MS SQL extension that you can install, install for VS Code, which gives you a little bit of an object explorer. But creating a connection in there isn't a UI experience. It's still typing things in. And Visual Studio Code is really more about development, right? Writing code, not just for SQL Server, but in other languages, okay, whatever your flavor is. Azure Data Studio is data focused. So when you need to do things related to your data as part of your development, you can do that from Azure Data Studio. Or if you're new to Azure, new to Azure SQL, and you need a tool that is not as big and heavy as SSMS, then we have Azure Data Studio. It also offers the extensibility, I've mentioned extensions a few times, right? Where you can basically add in what you need. 
SSMS deep and wide has all of this stuff that sometimes you have no need for whatsoever. Azure Data Studio, if I need to manage Postgres, whoever had mentioned Postgres earlier, right, I can add that extension in. But if you don't do anything with Postgres, you don't need it, okay? So Azure Data Studio is really about your data, accessing your data in Azure, and then working with that in some way, shape, or form. Okay, <clears throat> so I talked a little bit about terminal, which is great. Um, connections. So my connections pane over here on the left side. So these are connections that have been saved uh, in a nice list view. By default, they're just all listed over there on the left. And by the way, this saved connections list is different than my kind of connection uh, recent list, which is over here. So I can have a bunch of things in this recent list that aren't necessarily created as saved connections within uh, my connections pane on the left. <laughs> I discovered this the other day and this was so obvious to me, I laughed at myself. You know, in Management Studio, we can widen this and then we can pin it and unpin it, right? Which is what I'm really used to. Over here, all you have to do is just click on the little icon and it disappears and shows itself. Maybe you all knew that, but that was one of those things where I was like, oh, look at that, that's how I make it go away. There it is. So within my list of servers, I have the ability to also create server groups, which this is something that I really like. I've got one created for Azure. You can create and organize these however you want, right? So I might have one called production DB. Maybe that's going to be red and I can say okay. And then I can move my database down into my production DB group. So personally, I'm a huge fan of having these listed here and grouping, and then just connecting to those uh, servers, databases when I need them. Let's see. Now, down here at the bottom, you see I have this little Azure floating. Uh, I can expand that, bring that up, so that then I can see the Azure accounts to which I have connected. So some of you may have many, some of you may only have one. Right? And then within each of my Azure accounts, I have different subscriptions available. So when I connect to my Azure account, right, I have a few different subscriptions available within here. I can expand this out, and I'm gonna pause right here. There's a couple things that we've added. Um, we added dedicated pools and Azure Synapse Analytics in the 1.41 release, which was in January. We are working on 1.42, which I had hoped we would have had out Wednesday this week, but we had a couple things, so we pushed it off. Um, it's hopefully gonna be coming out next week. Not everybody knows that, so yay you for insider information. Um, but this view, I think we can do better on. Um, for example, I think that it would be very useful if rather than all these little folders right, next to SQL database, SQL server, et cetera. We had the icons that matched what you see in the portal. Does that sound nice to folks? By the way, I'm actively asking you for feedback here on the tool, right, and so you get to have input if you want. So I think that would be cool and much more helpful. Thumbs up in the back, I love that, thank you. So if I expand SQL database, here I can see I have a couple databases that exist. If I wanna connect here, all I have to do is this. So you know how, I don't know about you, but I do not ever remember my connection strings for my Azure SQL database. I don't, I don't wanna have to go into the portal to get it, and I don't, right? If I get there through Azure Data Studio and I grab my connection, here's my server right here. Now in this one, I have a SQL login for that. Uh, here's me, let's see if my password is correct. And then one of the other things down here that I wanna point out, by default, you'll see that for server group, I cannot draw with this today. It did say, here, let me try this again. Seriously, like in my XE session earlier, it was awful. It says, do not save, which means by default, when I'm connecting there, it's gonna connect, but it's not gonna add that connection to the pane on the left. So if you've run into that, that's why. I don't like that behavior, personally. Um, I understand why we did it, I'm advocating that we're gonna change that so that we'll add it by default. 
So for right now, what I need to do is I'm gonna say, do this, add it to my Azure, and connect. Now, a couple of things that I wanna call out here that changed in the 1.40 release, which was back in November, and an upcoming change um, that's coming out. These options right here, this encrypt and this trust server certificate. So these, you've run into these, right? Yeah. Specific to um, SQL 2022 and Azure SQL Database. So for Azure SQL Database, you're gonna encrypt, you don't have to worry about trusting the server certificate or anything like that. I should be able to just go connect here. Um, let's make sure that I have my IP range, all that stuff. And then this should go ahead and connect and add this with under, under Azure. But those two connection options are new because of new functionality in SQL 2022 and also because of that new MDS driver that I mentioned, the 5.x version. What do I have wrong here? <clears throat> Doesn't exist. Fine. Let me just talk about these anyway. Um, so two things. The first is this encrypt option, which right here you see we have three options, true, strict, and false. In this is an insider build, as an aside. Um, this is what's gonna be in the 1.42 release. So previously we only had true and false, right? Encrypt or not encrypt. Now we have this third option which includes strict. So this is going to be new in 1.42. Um, trust server certificate, true or false. And then on the advanced tab, um, you can, if you're using certificates in SQL 2022 and you have a certificate, um, if you've got that installed, you wanna make sure that you enter host name and certificate here. So for those of you that have already walked through this challenge on SQL 2022, um, I think we need to do a better job of documenting it, which is in flight as well. Um, so if you have specific feedback about that, you should feel free to email me. Okay, so once I have my connections here, right, at any point I can come back um, and I can edit this connection, I can take a look at it. Right here I had optional uh, false for my encrypt, uh, and I don't think I had hostname and certificate there. Okay. Questions? Oh, there was one other thing I wanted to show you. This was something that was not intuitive to me. Um, don't read these names too hard. So don't, don't look too much, right? This is my Microsoft account. So I, <laughs> so I have a lot of those subscriptions that I have access to. I don't know what they all do. Um, I don't know who owns them all, right? I don't wanna go in there and get in trouble. So I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna do this filter with my other one. But some of you may have lots and lots of subscriptions, right, within your account. You may not really need to see all of those. I don't need to see everybody else's subscription there. But what you can do is you have this little icon, this filter, which is basically, which ones do I care about and do I wanna see? So if you're tired of this big giant list that really isn't relevant to you, you can just go ahead and when you expand this, you'll only see the ones that you have filtered, right? Okay. You can also go ahead and start a cloud shell from here if that floats your boat. Um, I'm not gonna go through and do anything fancy there. I'm gonna pause, see how we're doing. Any questions so far? Yes. Why is it not an option? So I can do this, yep. right? But it pops up down here. But you're telling me right here, yep. you when it does this, it's not there. And why isn't it there? That's a really good question. Who would like to write down that note for me and send it to me? Or would you like to email me and ask me that? Would you do that? Okay, because I'll tell you that in like one hour, I'm gonna forget your question. But it's very important and I would love to know the answer for that and see if it makes sense for us to add it there. So please send me an email, because I'm not sure why. It's also possible. 
Remember this came out originally in 2018, right? And there were a lot of things in that original charter that we were looking to do, right? Originally it was named, does anybody remember what it was originally named? SQL Operations Operation Studio, right? For operational tasks that you need to complete. Um, and then we changed it to Azure Data Studio. Operational tasks that you all need to complete, create a database, delete a database, attach a database, backup, restore, right? Query editor, user management. I would consider those all operational tasks, agreed? Yeah, they're not done, right? No. So sometimes what I think is that we got into something and then we changed direction and didn't finish it. So that might be why that's the case. And um, it's really easy, by the way, for me, who's only been there for a year, to be like, well, we didn't do such a great job at this, right? Um, but there's a lot of factors that go into software development. And we got started on Azure Data Studio, and then there was a big push for uh, making sure we had support for big data clusters. Rest in peace. Um, so we did some work for big data clusters, and there's a big push, there was a big push for notebooks, which some of you love, right? So we did a lot of work on notebooks. And unfortunately, even though you can say you're Microsoft, right, you can do anything. We, we can do anything, but we also have a finite number of folks, right, who are available to do that. So we've, I've spent the last year kind of really understanding our challenges and what we need to do. And so we're coming back to trying to finish some of those operational scenarios. So as an example, <clears throat> right, previously, uh, you couldn't do anything really in terms of user management. So right now, if I come into Wide World Importers, I come into security, I look at my users, right? Hey, look at that. I have the ability to right click and create a new user. And I actually have the ability to right click and create a new login. So that's kind of exciting, right, friends? Okay, there's some, yes, thank you. I, I really appreciate the little applause and the thumbs up. I really do, because the, <laughs> the, the engineers, um, like I've come to them since I started and I'm like, this is what we need to do. And I think they've kind of been like, really? And I'm like, look at all of these comments that tell us this is what we're missing. Um, so this is what I'm very focused on at this point is the user feedback and getting the stuff into Azure Data Studio. So you have the ability now to create logins, to create users. Uh, you can also create Azure Active Directory um, users. So we're also trying to make sure that it's Azure forward, right? Azure first, so that we're not just supporting historical on-prem, it's Azure Data Studio. We're gonna support the activities that you need to do there. So this is currently in preview. So if you go to 1.41, you will not see that. I am running the insider build of what will be 1.4, actually three, I think. Uh, insider build, how many of you know what I mean when I say insider build? Okay, so for those of you who do not, Let's do this. Hang on, Bill, I see your question. I'm gonna come back to it. Um, let's go to Azure Data Studio GitHub. If you're using Azure Data Studio, please feel free to bookmark this page. Um, so within here, uh, if we scroll down, right, we have a, we have a download page, uh, a release notes page. Here's where you can download the, um, stable release, the latest stable release, which again is 1.41. And then below that, we have the insiders build. So the insiders build gets updated almost daily. If you like to be cutting edge, you want to be cutting edge, you wanna see what we're working on, this is the version to run. And then what you can do whenever you feel like it, because it doesn't happen automatically, is within here, you go up to help and you go check for updates. And it will look to see, do we have a, a new update of an insider build? And if so, it'll download it and then you say install update and it'll install it and there you go. So I would love for those of you who are interested in using Azure Data Studio more, for you to give the insiders build a try. Um, it does mean that some things that you're seeing may be buggy, right? We may have issues. Feel free to come back over here to the issues tab and log an issue. I have no problem with that. Although if you could check to make sure to see if, if an existing issue for that same issue is already there. Um, also a little tidbit, if you're curious, 
whenever you see this, right, because this is public facing, by the way, right? It's an open repository. If you're a developer, you can go ahead and, and right, create a PR and check some code in. Um, I've done it once. I'm very proud of that because I am not a developer. But if you come in here to this, anytime you see a release endgame, that's a hint that we're about to have a release coming up. And if you want to know what's in that release, right, um, you can do that. So this is, this is where you can download the RC, the release candidate, if you want to see what that is. And then the other thing we have over here, you see this milestone. If I go to this milestone, if I go to the March 20, 2023 release milestone, here's, I got one thing open. This is all of the stuff that is going to be in the next release. So I put all this in the release notes, but if you're interested in seeing anything, here you go. Okay, question. Any plans to give Azure Data Studio the ability to run code against multiple connections like registered servers in SSMS? How many folks in here do that in SSMS? Okay, so that's probably half the room for those of you who are online and can't see that, which I'm gonna say is maybe, I don't know, 30, 40 people. Um, so that's something that you do uh, a fair bit. I've seen that come through in the uh, comments, right? I get a lot of things like, it doesn't do what SSMS does. I know, <laughs> I need to know specifically what you want it to do, right? So if you ever provide that feedback, provide detail. I've got some comments that are like six lines. My favorite is when they do pros and cons. I love that because I want to see what's great and I want to see what's not great. But if, it, if you say missing features, I really want to know what that is. So it's good to know that that is a missing feature. Um, can we do it? Yes, we can do it. It's not in my current list of important things that I need the connection, the, the folks who are working on connection to do. Um, but I will, I will add it to my list. So I, I don't know if slash when it will come, but I've seen that feedback a fair bit and I understand the value for doing so. But am I correct in thinking that when you're doing that, you're doing that mostly against your on-prem or uh, SQL in a VM database? Would that be accurate? Okay, do any of you do that against your Azure SQL databases? Some of you do. Okay, so you would wanna have a connection to 5, 10, 100 Azure SQL databases and run a query against all of them. Two. Oh, two. Okay. <laughs> I got it. I, I got you. I, I, I hear that request. I, I, truly, I fully hear that request. Okay. How am I doing? What time did we start? Seriously, I, I know. I'm a serious. At what? And I go till when? 4:10. Oh. Oh, I'm. Oh, I'm not good. I'm not good. We're gonna run out of time. Um, that's okay. Not a question. But biggest blocker for day to day on Azure Data Studio over SSMS is not being able to undock to separate windows. SSMS handles splitting queries within the main window or to other monitors. Tim, I've heard that, I've read that one too. I got you. Um, so you want, you can't undock, right? And this is a, and understand again, because we're a fork of VS Code, there's some limitations that exist with VS Code um, that we, that for us to make magically happen like that would be a lot. So I don't know if that will eventually come to VS Code, but what you can do is, if I do, let me just open, let me just do a new query. Um, I do have the ability, if I do this, I do have the ability to do side-by-sides, right? So one of the things that I would often do in Management Studio if I, if I only had one monitor and I didn't want to undock and bring a window over here and have a window over here, right, is I would split it. So I can do that within Azure Data Studio. So Tim, I, I understand, um, but that's your, that would be your workaround for now. Okay, <clears throat> let me close this. Something else I would like to show you um, is right now, when I look at this database, when I look at any database in my list, right, I see tables, views, synonyms, program, programmability. You all are familiar with this view, right? Has anyone ever said, have you ever thought, 
it would be really nice if I could view things by schema instead. So this is your new friend, right here, this little icon. So I'm gonna click this, which is group by schema, right? This is gonna refresh. And now when I come in here, this list is grouped by schema. And so when I expand application, now I can see the tables, views, synonyms, programmability within that. Thank you. Oh. I did not do that work, but I did convince them that that was important to do. Your next question might be, are you gonna bring that to SSMS? What do you think my answer is? No. Uh, at this time, I do not have plans to bring that to SSMS. Um, did I tell you already what we're doing next for SSMS? No? Okay, little detour. Um, the priority for SSMS is, uh, we had a 1902 go out on Monday, I told you that, right? That had a few bug fixes. We'll do a 19.1. Um, probably not until next quarter. Uh, I'd like to get that out. It's going to have a few more fixes in it, not necessarily anything new grand in terms of functionality. What we're looking forward to instead is SSMS 20. Traditionally, you've seen us ship SSMS 16 with SQL Server 2016, right? That was when we decoupled. Then we had SSMS 17 in 2017. Then we had SSMS 18 in SQL Server 2019, right? Now we're on SSMS 19 and SQL 2022. So then we're gonna go to an SSMS 20 without any on-prem. So don't read anything into that other than it's enough of a change that we're calling it its own version of SSMS. So that goes to new VS shell, which means 64-bit, new connection, uh, new MDS, the MDS 5 that we picked up here. Those are three significant changes for Management Studio. So that is where um, that will be going next. Things like group by schema, et cetera, right? we can talk about after that. But I need to get that version of SSMS out first. Um, Tim, I know Azure DS Studio can have multiple queries within the main window, but the real estate and horizontal scrolling means it's limited for reference. So Tim's challenge is really just kind of fundamentally the way that Visual Studio has its windows laid out uh, and by default then Azure Data Studio. I hear that and this is where I'll be really honest with you. Like, if SSMS works better for you in terms of your day-to-day -day and like how you can move those screens around, that's fine. Like it's okay to stay in SSMS. I am not trying to convince you. Um, adding that kind of functionality to Azure Data Studio right now has a lower priority, okay? There are just operational fundamental things that we need to have in this tool, okay? So I, I hear that, um, <clears throat> sorry. Okay, but group by schema. Group by schema applies to all of my SQL connections. So notice that this sits, this, this option here, sits at the server level. It is not per database or per instance to which you're connected. It's for all your connections. So I just wanna set expectations about that behavior. Okay. Ah, create a new table. So within here, hmm, okay, hold on, I'm gonna pause before I do that. Another question which is uh, from someone online or maybe in the room, I'm not sure. Uh, is it possible to turn off IntelliSense in Azure Data Studio as pressing tab causes havoc and slows me down? Uh, I hear that, I, I, I see mixed review about IntelliSense. Somebody said that they loved the IntelliSense in Azure Data Studio. For every one of those comments, I hear, I hate the IntelliSense in Azure Data Studio. Okay, um, we can probably do better there. Um, that's something that I have on my list. I'm not sure how quickly we will get to it. In terms of turning it off, I don't know. Uh, I, we don't have that capability right now. What I don't know is how easy it is to add that capability. So um, Kevin, if you would possibly send me an email so that I can follow up on that, that would be fantastic, thank you. Okay, table editor. This was something that we added that went GA in 1.40 back in November. Right click, new table. So I can go ahead and I can create a new object, right? I can call it whatever I want, uh, migrate info. I can add columns. I can change the data type. How many of you knew this was in here already? 
Okay, this was, a, this was a reasonable request that we had from folks, right? Think of the new person to Azure, the new developer who wants to create a table, who doesn't know the create table syntax by heart, who doesn't want to go flip over to docs to go look that up, right? This gives them the same type of table designer that we had in SSMS, but the thing is, is I like to say, we don't do things exactly the same in ADS that we did them in SSMS. We're gonna try and do them a little bit better. Again, love both of my children, I just love them differently. So here, what we, do, what we have is we have uh, support for system versioning. Notice that. <clears throat> You're applauding because we have system versioning? I appreciate that a lot. I don't know why my phone is ringing right now. Like, make it stop. Anyway, we have support for system version tables. We also have support for, uh, here we go. This is the tab that I wanted. For graph and for memory optimized. So if you need to create either one of those within Management Studio, right, you right click and you're like, new memory optimized table, what does it do? Gives you a script, right? Here, you get to do that all within the UI. Um, the other thing is that if I say I'm going to make this a system versioned table, right, gives me my history table information, and then it automatically adds, oops, let me zoom in correctly here, automatically adds my two columns that I need for system versioning. Okay, so trying to make the creation of objects a little bit easier for folks who might not be comfortable with the T-SQL. Question was, can I right click a system version table and edit it? I don't know, let's see. Um, this is a system versioned, right? Here this is. Doesn't look like it, probably for good reason, so no. Okay. I got, do I really just have 10 more minutes? That's it. Eight. Eight. Okay. <clears throat> but I can continue the discussion in the community center. So I got to um, number four on my list, y'all, and I was seriously worried that I was not gonna have enough time for everything. So I'm gonna talk without fully demoing some other things that I wanna point out. Uh, this was a discussion that came up on a thread the other day. So I have this explorer section, and you know how in SSMS you, have, you can create a solution and then you can see all the, your scripts underneath that. Someone wanted to do that in Azure Data Studio. And you, you can do a couple different things in here, but one of them is I can go ahead and um, I can add a folder, which is what this ADS folder is, and right, that is this folder right here. So I have the ability then to come in here and open my notebook right from there. So basically the list of uh, files and subfolders within a folder if you are interested in doing that. The other thing that exists in here, which we picked up from, um, I think this is from VS Code, is this timeline. So you can see that I've been making changes to this file, right? That is this ADS surprises file that I had open. If I make these changes and then at some point I'm like, I had something in an earlier version and I deleted it somehow by accident, I can click on this and it will open those side by side and basically diff them for me so I can figure out what's different between the two files. Right? Very nice, love it. Okay, um, that's, that's just in there for free. Uh, the other thing that I really love is an extension which is called Query History. So one of uh, the engineers on our team was working on this. I really like it a lot. So what I can do from here is if I go into, hold on, nope. Hold on. See, this is where I don't remember where everything is yet. Forgive me. But I wrote myself a note for where to find it. Go under view. Go under, nope, nope. Open view. Here we go. Query history. There we go. It shows up down here at the bottom. It shows me the queries that I'm running. So if you're ever tuning or troubleshooting, particularly when you're tuning. You know how you write a query and you run it and you look at the performance and you're like, no, nah, that's not right. And you change it and you run it. And you're like, no, nah, that's not right either. You change it and you run it. And you're like, that's pretty good, but let me see if I can do better. And you keep changing it. And then you haven't been doing your copy, paste, edit, copy, paste, edit. This is the history of the queries that you've run. So at any point, I can come back here 
and I can be like, oh, this is the one that I want, and it will open that up for you. So a history of what you have executed within Azure Data Studio. Um, I like that one too, thank you. I appreciate that, I will let Charles know. Okay, the last thing that I'm only gonna have like a minute to show you is execution plans. So we added this in the November release as well. So we have estimated plan, which you're probably used to, as well as actual plan. So let's, let me go ahead and open up the better one for this, which this should be somewhere down here, maybe? Demo, 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 nope, nope, query plan viewer, there we go, here we go. Yes, I trust myself. Okay, so within Azure Data Studio, I can go ahead and run this, and then I'm gonna go ahead and enable actual plan. So it's a persisted, right? This is for all of my, um, my connection. Here we go in terms of my execution plan. There's another tool that you may have heard of called Plan Explorer, which was created by Century One, rest in peace. Um, that tool has not seen a lot of development in recent times, rest in peace. Um, so we took a few things that we thought were great and I said, can we, can we make these things happen over in Azure Data Studio? So one of them is top operations. So those of you who have wanted to right, understand what is most expensive, based on cost, based on average row size, whatever it is, come in here, you can sort, move things around. And then what I really like is you can come over here to this operation and if I click on it, it jumps to where that operation is within the plan, right? So very cool. Um, we get to do, we get to see that pretty easily. All of the things that show up in your right click menu here also exist over here on the far right, okay? So um, from here I can jump to top operations. Something that we had a big request for, which I thought was great, is you know how you have a, a big plan, let me, let me make this a little bit, and like you're scrolling around in the plan because that's what we tend to do, right, as we move around, and you're scrolling around and you know how you hover over and like the tooltip pops up all the time and you're like, hold on? So you'll notice that I'm hovered here and nothing's happened. It's because in order to get that properties window, you have to click on the operator. And if you don't want that at all, you can disable it. So you can disable this entirely and it doesn't matter what you do, those won't show up. So for those of you that work with bigger plans, that might be great. You can also highlight um, the expensive operation based on cost or whatever, and it will move to that operator within the plan, show that for you as well. If I want to do plan comparison, and I know that I have two minutes to go and I'm doing my best, right? I can go ahead and run my query and I get my plan. I can right click and I can do compare execution plan, add one, that we're going to compare against here. And then I can do the comparison. So we have this in SSMS, right? <laughs> Thank you. We have this in SSMS. Um, I thought, again, we can do the same, but how can we maybe make it a little bit better? So there's a couple of things that we did that are different that I, that I really like, that I think we did well. If I wanna compare, let's say, these two hash matches, I have up here this properties Right? It's, it's kind of small in this window, but I have properties window. And what the properties is doing is it's comparing the properties between those two operators that I have highlighted. And by default, it's bringing to the top of the list the things that are not equal. Now there's a lot in here, right? But it's bringing to the top of the list the things that are not equal to try to make it easier for you to understand what's different between them. In addition, what we also do is I want to point out up here, do you see that this says query one of two? How many times do you have a procedure that has lots and lots of queries within it, and then you open up this giant plan, and then if you try and compare the plans, it's messy. So here, you can select which query within there you want to compare, and understand that you may be changing the order of things, so I'm gonna drop this down and I'm gonna select query two, and then I can drop this down and select query two as well. Right, so makes it a lot easier, I think, to do analysis comparison between plans. 
I have hit time, they have said. What t hang on one second. What time is the next session? I'm not kidding. What time is the next session? Anybody know? In 10 minutes. Okay, so I have somebody who's coming in. Gabby's like, 10 minutes, girl, get out. Okay, so here's the thing. I have to wrap up. I apologize that I had way more to cover than I fully realized in 50 minutes. I appreciate every single one of you attending and listening, taking this in, being willing to um, potentially provide feedback about Azure Data Studio. I'm gonna go all the way to the end, I'm not done. I, I'm gonna get out of here, but I promise I am not done. Okay, no, I don't wanna go here. Come on, I'm here, here, okay. My request, again, I'm gonna say it again because I mean it. This is my email address. If you have questions that didn't get answered, one, I will go outside so that whoever's coming in next has space. I will go outside, I will go into the expo hall, I will happily answer whatever questions you have. If you wanna provide feedback, I am more than happy to have you email me. Please do provide feedback about this session. You loved it, you hated it, I, I didn't plan well, totally all, you know, whatever, that's good, yes. Will I share the file? Yes, so um, I have a GitHub repo. So if you go look for Aaron Salato GitHub, not Aaron Salato-MS, Aaron Salato GitHub, I will put it out on GitHub and it has all of my notes in it and I'll throw some other things in there as well, okay? Thank you so much for attending. Let me know if you have questions. <laughs>